Somebody make me come through. I'll always be there, as frightened as you, to help us survive. Being alive. Being alive. Being alive. Mom gave you some great legs, though. Mm hmm. That yep. lady. Um, that lady has some beautiful legs. <laughs> so I know mares eat oats. Right, and I know also that does eat oats, but I haven't the foggiest what little lambs eat. We'll figure it out. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Fiddle. <sighs> Did you ever see Operation Condor Armor of the Gods? That should be your next one. My coffee is out of reach. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Hello. Today we're going to be making sense of life through marriage story. Mm -hmm. mm. So juicy. <laughs> <laughs> it follows a couple going through the divorce. Malheureusement. <laughs> and it's basically Scarjo's character. She's at the point of no return. Need to get a divorce. Yeah. Asks her family, her sister, to serve her husband the divorce papers. And then it's the process of, of them needing to get lawyers and them trying to figure out the whole process and how going through a divorce can really destroy an already destroyed marriage and just what it puts two people through. As ugly as it gets at one point where there's two lawyers having a proxy war, a proxy argument, picking out all the deepest, darkest secrets that only the couple know, but because they share all this stuff with, with the lawyers, lawyer. now it's like the two lawyers know all this stuff and they're just ripping the other person apart. Very personal, intimate things uh, and using it against them. So even after that, they end up coming to actually a pretty good negotiation between the two sides. And then now they're trying to figure out a way to have a balanced life. This is what grinds my gears. These two people, Nicole and Charlie, should not have gotten divorced. Let me not say should because you know, I do not have the authority mm. to determine who's, you know. It is not vested in okay, you. Okay, let me, let me go. <laughs> yeah. I feel like they should have gone to therapy. You know, like, obviously things had gotten to that point. But I don't feel like they'd gotten to that impasse where you kind of like, this is the point of no return. The reason I say that is because of how they are actually move through the whole divorce. Like you were saying, yeah. the divorce lawyers just go super, super dark. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, they basically just make the decision yeah. to fight for each other. And yeah. what they, the two of them committed to in terms of how they would actually divorce. Yeah. ultimately amicably yeah. that's what they wanted yeah. and i remember even the lawyer at the end she's like nicole asked her lawyer you know you did ask for 50 50 right custody and she's like no I had 55, it be 55 45 because i don't want him going to people yeah. and telling them that you know we won yeah, you know what i mean won. obviously she's visible nicole is visibly frustrated and yeah. in the end i remember it was her night she's like she he seems tired yeah. why don't you take him home we have uh, yeah. we had a dinner but and he's like it's your night no yeah. it's he's it's okay yeah so that to me says these people were not out of love with each other mm -hmm. first of all and they were also immature and empathetic enough, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. to actually work through their issues. Mm -hmm. They understand each other, they have such a deep respect yeah. and love for each other. Mm -hmm. And I understand that you could love someone and then there's no prospect of it working. Because right. I think a lot of people, you do end up and you find yourself in a relationship and you are in love with someone. But there are lots of reasons that we turn to love. You know, maybe yeah. it's just because you're lonely or because they remind you of someone or something and you feel that, well, I, I guess in the, at this point, maybe one could say is infatuation, but at the end of the day, there are lots of reasons we love people. And sometimes it doesn't justify actually being with those people. Right. But with Nicole yeah, and Charlie, yeah. I was like, what? Especially the scene at the end when Charlie's reading what Nicole wrote for the therapist, the yeah. counseling therapist, the divorce therapist or whatever. And it's a lot of very sweet complimentary stuff, you know, yeah. and he'd never read it before because she didn't want to read it in front of the therapist yeah. at the beginning of the movie. And then Nicole's seeing him read it and they're yeah. both getting they both very cry. emotional and sad. Yeah. So. The great thing about the but, movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. No, you go. No, you go. No. Mm-mm.
My I thing is you. divergent. Um, I feel like my thing is divergent too. Yeah, I think they're always divergent. The great thing about the movie for me was how I felt like it was quite an accurate portrayal. I mean, a fair portrayal because a lot of times with these kinds of movies, there's always, there has to be a villain, mm -hmm. right? You know, and and, and a, a person who was taken advantage of. Right. This was the second time watching this movie. And I remember the first time watching it, I felt so upset mm -hmm. about how Charlie was being being treated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I felt like- You're like, Nora's taking advantage from the beginning, her yeah. lawyer, Nicole's lawyer, and then Nicole Cole does seem to be changing the game a lot. Charlie seems to be, no, no, she wouldn't do this, she wouldn't yeah. do this, and then keeps asking for more, trying to take more, and you're like, yeah. oh, that does seem pretty uh, manipulative. Exactly. And then you find right. out that, oh, Charlie cheated. And then yeah. you're like, oh, no. Yeah. You know what I mean? Does yeah. that mean that Charlie was the bad guy? But then later, you find out that, well, you know, as they're talking about yeah. it, he's like, you know, you weren't sleeping with me, you know, yeah. like, you weren't giving me love, obviously, yeah. right? Yeah. So then you discover that, you know what, the cheating was most likely a symptom of something, yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah. That was already happening, yeah. the fact of her feeling like she wasn't seen or respected is what for her she let what led her to make the decision to divorce him it's really tricky you know because her feelings about why she ended up pursuing divorce i felt like they both were in the same kind of position and these are things that kind of come up throughout the movie i remember later as they're arguing at charlie's apartment he reveals that you know what like you wanted to get married so early i was mm -hmm. scared you yeah. know so basically obviously he loved her yeah. and got married because that's something that she wanted mm -hmm. but he wasn't he didn't feel ready for it yeah. he was, you know what i mean yeah. and he was scared and he's talking about my life changed i had yeah. all of these you know in my 20s i could have done abc but yeah. you know what i mean but i kind of I, I i didn't take advantage that i feel like i wasted my 20s because exactly. i wanted to be true to you and we yeah. got married at that point so then yeah so then maybe had that kind of resentment at the same time you know you're like okay you could see where he feels like well he wasn't ready pressured into it um lots of wasn't loss prepared in terms of his own ambition loss like because he was marriage. he was already like it's just his, his career was skyrocketing and of course he was getting a lot of attention then from people he's like there were a lot of women that were interested in him but then so it's like on one hand you're like okay he felt like he wasn't ready but at the same time you're like well i was young i would have wanted to still like hook up more with people and it's like my 20s my 20s you know you know so what like you know to say that you you wait Wasted your 20s. What does that even mean? I don't know. You didn't waste them because then you got married to someone that you love and then. You know. I could say the same for Nicole because even as he's talking about like he's not really hankering for the woman that he didn't have yeah. you know this was when he was talking about they were talking about the relationship basically kind of pointing out that if women were an actual issue I could have done it in my 20s when people women were throwing themselves at me me cheating with one person having that fling like once once off it was not because I'm out here trying to you know willy-nilly um enjoy <laughs> willy-nilly <laughs> <laughs> For me, what I what I see with these two people is that both of them had their own needs that they never brought to light. You yeah. know what I mean? They never actually shed light on what they feel and what yeah. concerns that they have. So for him, he feels like he lost critical yeah. years of his life where he could have pursued his career yeah. and his ambitions to the great, a greater degree yeah. than he did. It's not to say that he didn't love her. It's yeah. just because of these opportunities that when you get married, yeah. there are lots of compromises you make and you are an individual person. And, and you know maybe, what I mean? And maybe that's where on her end she feels like he never compromised the the beat of their of the drum of their relationship always went to his beat right she was always playing second fiddle always like going along with whatever he wanted to do but maybe in his mind he was still compromising because he exactly. had even loftier goals or, or wanted a more freedom that way so then he, he thinks oh, I'm doing lots of compromising in her mind she's like I, I'm, I, I have no person I have no self I don't know who I am I don't yeah. know what I you know exactly so yeah. that's where I'm like these people had the same exact concerns yeah so none of them talked about the concerns that they had they weren't vulnerable vulnerable with each other you yeah. know about this is where I'm at in my life yeah but they had this expectation that the other person would actually be understanding yeah. of the sacrifices they made without actually coming together and discussing them yeah. so many things that she was good at so many things that he was good at they kind of they balanced each other out in a lot yeah. of ways and on top of that they're very communicative like yeah. it, well obviously not, I mean not say communicative because clearly <laughs> didn't you know they care about each other yeah. and they make the effort to give right. to each other right. which I think that if actually they were communicative then things Things would have been fine because yeah. they both of them you know what I mean I remember yeah. when the gate was there was something wrong with the gate yeah. the power is out and I can't close yeah. the gate and, he and then he and comes around yeah. you know what I mean and then he's like oh, I'm just looking for hair dresses my hair is like I mean, you're looking pretty shaggy yeah. and okay I'll, I'll handle yeah. it yeah. you know what I, I mean? mean it might be one of those situations some people say uh, that, that happen in real life where uh, they're kind of better in divorce people say that yeah People always say that. And let me not say people always say that. And it's true. Yeah. Some people are better in, vor in divorce. And some people end things without fighting for things. Yeah. Relationships are not, are dead.
damn hard. You know, that's the thing about love. Like love is a mix of conflict, constant hurts, huge expectation. Once you fall in love with someone, the bar for what they need to give you is like, is extremely high. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, and that's why so many people understandably struggle with that commitment because you now become the financier, the house cleaner, the confidant, the best friend, the lover, the everything put on one person. Exactly. Right. So yeah, expectations are high because you need a lot from that person. Yeah. Realistic expectations are high. Even. Yeah, realistic expectations are high, but there are also a lot of unrealistic expectations. Right. For example, Charlie yeah. is not seeing me right. and it does not allow me mm. to pursue my my dreams. Mm. But whose responsibility is it? Is it Charlie's responsibility to have Nicole right. pursue yeah. her own ambitions? Yeah. No, it's not. It's hers. And so if anybody should be upset at anyone, it's Nicole and herself yeah. for allowing the situation yeah. to go for so long. I mean, she probably, she was also young, I imagine, at the time too. And then I think a lot of people can get very lost in the relationship. It's easy to lose yourself, I think. It's easy to fall into this kind of healthy or unhealthy kind of enmeshed, you're one entity thing. And then, and you know, a lot of people then have that, that struggle to also be interdependent, right? Or whatever, like have your own, maintain your own sense of self. It's a tough thing to, to have that balance of being independent, but also being as interdependent as there for the other person or as supportive as you need to be. There are three people in their relationships as we yeah. often talk about. There's you, there's the person you're married to, and there's the relationship itself, yeah. right? The person you you are outside of the entity that is your marriage, yeah. the person you are, it's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. As much as you wish your partner could read your mind, you're going to have needs exactly. pop up that maybe we're always there or you're gonna have new needs because needs are always coming in and out as, yeah. as the waves do. You're gonna have to let your partner know about yeah. the new needs. Yeah, 100%. And I'm not even saying that it's just Nicole here who, um, who was problematic in that sense because we only she's only finding out about yeah. what Charlie yeah. felt, yeah. you know, about his, his own. Yeah needs that were met yeah. in this relationship yeah. and what things he feels yeah. that he sacrificed. Yeah. Both of them had all carried all of these, all of this animosity <laughs> towards each other mm -hmm. and resentment towards each other. And yet they never actually yeah. expressed themselves. Yeah. And, and, and even like the little things which naturally come up because humans are complicated and maybe even petty or kind of envious or judgy people where she talks about, you know, she loves that Charlie loves being a dad, which is something that you would think, wow, she's so lucky. She found a guy that loves all the annoying things about being dad, the tantrums, the getting up when the kid is, you know, like he loves all that stuff. You're like, is this person even real? But then it even uh, kind of annoys her at times how much she likes it because they're kind of like, is he a better parent than me? Or how can you enjoy it? You, yeah. It's phony or something. You shouldn't be enjoying it. No one likes that stuff, you know? And that's just human stuff that can pick away at you if it's also not something that's like, you know, like if, if she told him like, Charlie, I gotta say, like, it's weird. And like, maybe I'm a bad person for this or something. But like, sometimes it annoys me that you love this stuff. And then you can talk about it, you can smooth it out, but you know. He loves being a dad. He loves all the things you're supposed to hate, like the tantrums, the waking up at night. I had a bad dream. It's a dream. It's almost annoying how much he likes it, but then it's mostly nice. Dad. I remember the song when Charlie was saying, oh, oh my God, that I- I, I, got, I, I was gonna look that up, being alive? It's probably yeah, called being alive. I don't know, but we gotta, we gotta look it up oh, because so it good. broke me. And even now, like I'm just getting super, God. <laughs> it completely kind of wraps up their situation. Exactly, their yeah. and the heartbreak of it. Yeah. The relationship they have afterwards, they're still friends. Being alive. Oh, so <laughs> to me, the relationship ended because two people were disgruntled. I think the great, greatest gift that you can give to your ex as a parent and as, and as a human being is that understanding that as much as I don't like you right now, you're still my kid's dad or you're still my kid's mom. And so that is something that I have to respect, not for you, not for me, but for my kid. I really felt for Charlie, even where he goes to visit the family home, Nicole's family mm -hmm. home where she's living right now, the pictures are not there of him mm -hmm. anymore because mm -hmm. he used to be, yeah. you know, on, yeah. on the gallery wall, but he's not there anymore. Those kinds of things kind of like feels like you're getting erased. Yeah, that's the thing of them realizing that you meld your lives together so much and then when you have to split that apart, it's like you are cutting a big chunk of yourself off as well. And like, yeah, when um, he first gets served the divorce papers and he's very close with his mother-in-law, Nicole's mother. And it's a, that's an awkward thing because understandably Nicole's frustrated that her mother is still like, but Charlie, I love Charlie. We, we do things together. We hang out sometimes and we're very goofy with each other. And, and I get where she's like, yeah, but you can't look at Charlie 
necessarily the same anymore. Like, you can't interact with them the same anymore. Yeah. You know, we're div- we're divorcing. That's a tough thing because it's kind of like you'd you'd wish that you'd have your mother in law like your husband that much. So exactly. then you know that's yeah. like kind of the but idea. They don't want you to break up. And then yeah, and then it's like and then so it's complicated another way. It's hard if you have in laws that don't like your partner, but then if you divorce, then I guess it's easier. But then on, in the reverse, she actually had the best situation there. But then it's harder when then if you do get divorced. That was also really heartbreaking, honestly, yeah. because there's so many relationships ending. There was no juice for divorce. Mm. You know what I mean? There was no juice. I've seen people who hurt each other every single day on purpose because maybe they're angry. I'm not yeah. really sure. I mean, I, you know, I wouldn't. And they're I, sticking it out. I mean, I, I <laughs> and I'm not I, saying that they should. I'm not saying yeah, they should stick it I out. I don't, I don't, what I'm I don't, saying I don't, is that I'm just confused by what it is. I don't know if I'd say there is no juice for divorce. Yeah, I'd say. There what? Is, what? Give me the grounds. Well, I think <laughs> I think uh, the gr- the grounds for the juice. I think Nicole clearly got to the point where she felt there was no other option. So I think that she had grounds. She felt there was juice. Now, I think that it wasn't completely unsavable, right? Well, here's the qualm. Yes. What's the qualm? As I said, what is the juice that you have? Your juice is that that there's juice? I have qualms in the sense that, you know how a lot of times you'll be like, I can't read your mind. You've got to tell me what's going on. And and then we've talked about it where I'm like, I reflect on, I cannot be upset with you. Yeah. Because I never told you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you only figure out that I'm upset because I'm like, I don't even want to talk yeah, to you. Yeah. And then you realize, okay, what did I do? Yeah. You know, but then the whole time before that, you're kind of trying to figure out what did I do? Oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. Is that fair? No. That is, for me, at that time when I'm upset with you, yeah. I feel like I have a qualm. Yeah. And if I then made the decision, weird. this is, I'm like, I'm, you know, ending things because yeah. of this <laughs> issue that yeah. I had that yeah. I never told you about. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's the thing. I feel like both parties do that to yeah. each other. Yeah. Because even when Nicole, as Henry, as Charlie says, stopped being more intimate or like mm-hmm. being more giving to him, right. Charlie should have talked about that yeah. instead of letting that play out to the extent that he then seeks comfort yeah. and intimacy, intimacy yeah. uh, into me I see. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> into me I see yeah. with the other lady. Yes. You know what I mean? Both of these parties, nobody's a, is, is absolved from my no. court of <laughs> law, not even, no, reason, yeah. justice. Court of qualm. My court of qualm. Yeah. Nobody's absolved from my court of qualm. Both Nicole, Nicole, Yes. <laughs> Nickel and, and Nickel Charlie. and Charlay. Charlay. <laughs> Both Nickel and Charlie would have served time. Yes, they're, they're both guilty. I feel that. But I mean, I wouldn't say there's no juice. I think there was some juice, but the juice was exaggerated. They really diluted the juice with a lot of water, and at the end, it's just barely flavored water at that point. <laughs> You know, they really dragged out the juice and they could have still made good punch with it. I think I'm getting a little lost in the metaphors. I'm also being, I'm like, I'm trying. Yeah. (laughs) But the ingredients for a good punch were there Mm -hmm. and they did not take advantage of that, you know? I am utterly desiccated at this point. (laughs) But yeah, that's, that's some of the stuff that we got thought about from Marriage Story. Yeah. But we'd love to hear what you guys think. More what we'd really like. Yeah. We're just curious to know yeah. who watches our stuff yes. and who likes the same kind of yes. movies because we love movies, yes. but we only have each other really. Yeah. We're just curious to know if they're yeah. human beings. If, you, if, you, if you're out there that you like it, just like, say yes. Like that. Just leave a yes. Do you reflect on movies like this? Yeah. Do you, when you watch movies, sit down and just kind of like reflect on your life? Everything that happened in the movie, does it feel like you know these people? Mm. Or you're only watching Marriage Story because of the drinking games. Like every time they or get upset joke. with each other, you take a shot. Yeah. You know? I mean, I guess you could do that. It'd be interesting to make a drinking game out of marriage story. I'm sure you could do it if you tried. But yeah, share your thoughts on our thoughts. But, yeah. Please. Till next time. That's Bye. it. Bye.